Hi, I'm John Packer. Today I'm employed through the Ability One program. This is a program that helps people with disabilities to find jobs. I never thought I would need a program like this, but life has turns you don't always know about in advance. Here's my story. I grew up in Taylor, Arizona, which is a small town in northeastern Arizona. As a kid, I spent most of my free time either doing Boy Scout stuff or working with my dad. When I was a kid, my dad was a plumbing and building contractor. I always liked to go with him and help out. He was a real hard working person. He could fix anything. My dad taught me the value of hard work in a unique way. He started working as a plumber when he was 10 years old. My father wasn't the best student. He, he said his grades were pretty low. He always says he never would have graduated high school if he didn't do the plumbing for most of his teachers. After high school, I worked seasonal construction jobs, then I got married and had a son of my own. It didn't take long to figure out I needed a better job to support my growing family. We had baby number two when I enlisted in the U.S. Army, and she turned one while I was in basic training. I was 25 years old. I did basic training in Fort Knox, Kentucky. I was one of the older guys in basic training, but I wasn't the oldest. While attending basic training, putting on the uniform for the first time, I felt an overwhelming sense of pride. The structure in the Army isn't for everyone, but it, would, and it worked for me. Being around the other soldiers motivated me and I learned a lot. I met people from all over the country. Throughout my Army career, I was stationed at Fort Lewis, Washington, Fort Carson, Colorado, and Fort Dix, New Jersey. My military job was a vehicle repairer and a vehicle repair supervisor. Army guys will recognize this MOS as 63 Whiskey, 63 Hotel, and 63 X-Ray. I had always liked cars. This was a great job for me. I worked hard and moved up the ranks pretty fast. I learned that you had to get a bachelor's degree if you wanted to keep getting promoted. So I buckled down. I got my associates and bachelor's degree while I was in the Army. My brother was the first, but I was the second person in my family to get this degree. For, for a guy who did the minimum in high school, I kind of surprised myself with, the, with that one. I discovered that when I applied myself, I could accomplish a lot. I felt that I was good at my job. The leadership part came naturally to me. As an NCO, I was not just a boss. I was a team builder and a role model. It meant a lot that my guys would ask me for help and advice. Some people don't like those responsibilities, but that was one of my favorite parts of the job. So the first five years of my Army career were in peacetime, but after the attacks on September 11, 2001, that changed. I was in the 2nd Transportation Company out of Fort Carson, also known as 2nd HET, or Heavy Equipment Transporters. Iraq was going to need a lot of heavy equipment boots, so my unit was deployed to Iraq twice. My first tour was for one year, April 2003 to April 2004. We were stationed in Tikrit at Fobbs Biker. Tikrit is known for being the hometown of Saddam Hussein. We were some of the first troops there. We were like the moving crew. Our job was to move the heavy equipment that arrived on ships at the port of, Ku port of Kuwait to the places it needed to be all over Iraq hundreds of miles away in every direction. We logged almost four million miles that year. Groups after us would log about a million miles in the same time frame. My team was proud to be recognized for making the move happen very fast. In fact, a few of us were awarded the Bronze Star and our unit was awarded the Meritorious Unit Award. My job as a mechanic was to travel with the trucks and fix anything that broke during the missions. And doing, and doing that many miles and that much sand means a lot of things broke. We were making these trucks do things they were never supposed to do, like driving for thousands of miles in sand-filled desert which, without changing the air filter or the oil filter. The mileage alone was bad enough but we also didn't have replacement oil or air filters for about the first six months. If a truck crashed or got blown up, 
the mechanics like me would go on like vultures to take out the filters and the oil or any other parts because you never knew when we would get more. At the time I was a staff sergeant and I was in charge of about 10 guys. I felt responsible for their safety, but we were not in a safe place. The hardest part for me was sending my guys in harm's way every day. I struggled to get sleep many nights. We were facing death every day for a year. We had to be careful and aware at all times because we were in danger. But we also had a job to do. I had to get it out of my head while also having it in my head. I felt adrenaline 24 hours a day. The year went by and we were lucky. Our entire unit survived. The IDs were not as bad that first year. The insurgents were not as skilled at fighting yet. In the spring of 2004, we all came home to our families. I thought it would be a relief to come home and to be out of harm's way, but it wasn't. I couldn't lose that feeling of being in danger. I did what a lot of soldiers do. I drank a few beers to see if that might help. And sometimes I drank too much. Then I started having problems controlling my anger. The Army counselor put me on anti-anxiety medication, which helped. Around this time, I noticed that I wore out my knees in Iraq. Mechanics kneel on the floor a lot uh, to work on the cars, so it's not unusual for mechanics to develop knee problems on the job. My uncle is a mechanic, and he's had three knee replacements. When I came back from the tour, my knees and shoulders were worn out and I started having a lot of problems with pain. I started seeing different doctors to figure out what was wrong. Another kind of weird thing is my wife said that I looked that I had aged 10 years instead of one. My face looked older. I thought the stress aged me. I was getting everything sorted out when my unit was deployed again. We were sent back for another tour from November 2004 to November 2005. By this time, I was the senior staff sergeant and I had made the sergeant first class promotion list and I was in charge of 50 soldiers. We went to the same place to crit where we had the same job moving heavy equipment. We logged only a little over a million miles this, day, this time because we had done so much moving the first tour. Again, we were lucky and we had an ex excellent route clearing team. My entire unit survived the year. After a year you would think I would have been happy to be home, but after seeing all the work that needed to be done in Iraq, I felt guilty to come home. I felt like I should go back to where I was needed. I felt that with so much work left to do, I would be called back again at some point. For the next three years, I was assigned to a unit in Fort Dix, New Jersey, that trained reserve and National Guard units to deploy to Iraq and Afghanistan. While I worked this job, I tried to fix everything that got messed up in Iraq. I had surgery on my left knee twice and went to a counselor to get my anxiety cleared up. After a few surgeries, it was clear that my knees were not getting better. They were getting worse. If I stomped on the ground, it would hurt so bad I saw stars. Not only was my health getting worse, but my marriage was unraveling as well. A lot of marriages suffer in these circumstances, and mine was one of them. My wife and I got divorced after my second deployment. It was around this time when I got a medical evaluation, and this changed everything. They took one look at my knees and declared me not fit for duty. My knees were a deal breaker. I was going to be medically discharged from the Army. In a way, it was a relief. It was a struggle to perform my duties with my knees so worn out. But it was also strange to think I wasn't fit for duty anymore. I'd been doing this job for so long, I wasn't sure what I'd do next, or even what my options were. I went through the transition period and learned that I would get a severance package based on my diagnosis. I went through a resume writing and career counseling class where I learned about what opportunities might lie ahead for me. The VA gave me an 80% disability rating and explained that because of my service and my disability, I would get free VA healthcare benefits for the rest of my life. 
March 30th, 2010, was my last day in the Army. It was kind of bittersweet. One chapter of my life was over and one was beginning. I had a college degree, plus a lot of new skills, so I thought my job search would be short. All I wanted was a low-stress job, job working the counter at AutoZone or, or a place like that. Some place I could work around cars, but have no responsibility for a while, so I applied a few places and got called in for some interviews. I was surprised that the manager during the hi doing the hiring at AutoZone seemed a little threatened. He said I was more qualified for his job than he was. He probably wondered why a guy like me wanted an hourly wage job like that, so I didn't get it. After that fell through, I went to plan B, which was just get any other job out there. It wasn't as easy as I thought. I knew the economy was bad, but I hadn't counted on my disability getting in the way. I had skills as a mechanic, but because of my needs, I could no longer be a mechanic or compete against mechanic with younger needs. So I started applying for all kinds of jobs. I had 12 years of military experience, plus a degree, plus I had preferred status as a disabled veteran. So I thought I would be able to get a government job within a month or so. But I was unemployed for much longer than that. I applied for tons of government jobs. I applied for positions as a mechanic and maintenance supervisor. I applied for positions in procurement and human resources. I even applied for a job with the U.S. Army as a GSA manager. I performed an almost identical job for three years and four days and didn't get a call. Over the course of 10 months, I probably applied to 10 to 100 jobs. Out of all those applications, I only got five interviews. Some people love being employed, but I don't. I don't. I need to be busy. I had a friend who was a tattoo artist, and I ended up spending a lot of time with him. Since I knew how to fix trucks, I would trade him repairs on his truck for tattoos. I can still fix things. It just takes me a, a lot longer to do it, and I will definitely feel it later. After about ten, 10 months, I had a lot of tattoo work done. Most of my left arm is covered, and I have two new ones on my right arm. I think getting tattoos kept my mind busy. I could have made the same amount of money if I stayed on unemployment, but I need, needed to be busy. I heard about a company called PCSI through the state unemployment VA representative and decided to send in a resume. The job I applied for was called a clerk, and the VA rep said that they were looking for people with disabilities. I didn't really think I would get the job, but I applied anyway. The job as a clerk involved assigning soldiers to barracks and in processing soldiers. I got called in for the interview, and about a week later, I was finally offered a job. It was not exactly what I had done in my career before, but at least it was a foot in the door. My first day with PCI, PCSI was in January 2011. I was there about 10 months when a maintenance worker position opened up. It was more pay and let me do work with my hands. I applied and got the job. I'm responsible for building maintenance on the barracks on Fort Lewis, Washington. We replace light bulbs, patch holes in the walls, and do minor plumbing. My coworkers are some good people and we have a lot of fun and enjoy giving a good product to our soldiers and to make their homes better for them. The best part about my job is that it keeps me busy and keeps me connected with the military community. I feel like I am still a part of the military and my skills are relevant to, the, to this job. It's kind of funny. I'm doing a lot of the things that my dad used to do. I guess the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So in the past few years, my life completely changed. My job my health, my marriage. But I have a new job, and I even got remarried. In fact, I have a two-year-old son. I'm happy with this new chapter in my life. It worked out for me. But there was a time when things weren't so good. I was one of those unemployed vets that you hear so much about. Lucky for me, it was only for 10 months, but it could have been a lot longer if it wasn't for the Ability One program. So I'm here today to remind you about this program 
and ask you all a favor. The next time a contract comes across your desk, would you find out if the Ability One program per can perform it? It would mean a lot to me and the 3,000 other veterans who are employed through this program. We went to battle for you when you needed it. When it's time for you to go to battle for us, I'm sure you'll do the same.